Im's workers of Reddit, what's the most avoidable death you've ever seen? Probably any time someone could have worn a seatbelt but didn't. Not completely sure if I'm interpreting this right but people who take off their medical alarm, well-known brand Life Alert, to shower. It seems like half the dead bodies I go on have a medical alarm, but they took it off and slipped in the shower or while getting out. Those things are usually water resistant and that's an extremely common place to slip and fall. I was an army combat medic, EMTB. The worst completely avoidable death was when we got a call that an Afghan soldier nearby was having chest pains and their own medic was really concerned about it, so they sent him to our base. On the drive over, their convoy had to stop suddenly. One of the guys riding in the back of a pickup truck fell off the back because he wasn't wearing any kind of seat belt or harness. He probably would have been okay, but the truck behind them wasn't able to stop as quickly, so he got caught between the two. He probably would have survived, but he wasn't wearing his helmet either. His skull popped like a grape. Of course, in my opinion, 100% of the deaths I saw were completely avoidable. Especially because after nearly two decades of war, the US military pulled out, and the Taliban immediately retook the area. Men, women, children, and my brothers died for nothing. Oh, by the way, the chest pain guy was completely fine. There was absolutely nothing wrong with him. Drunk drivers. Way too many drunk drivers and the poor souls unlucky enough to be in their path. When patients don't take their medicine. Lots of type 2 diabetics don't take their metformin or change their diet slash exercise simply out of denial or they are too set in their ways. End up with bad kidney failure or heart problems. Additionally, had a patient who refused to take their medicine for their high blood pressure. No reason. Just refused. Ended up with a brain bleed on his brainstem, was a quadriplegic, on a ventilator, could not speak, move, or breathe on his own. He was in his 30s. Take your medicine people. As an RMD, me, sir, you are having a heart attack. The cardiologist will be here shortly, and we will be taking you to the cath lab as soon as we can. Patient, I'm going outside to smoke. Patient rips off ECG leads and effort pads. Walks out despite warnings from myself and others. M's radio, 15 minutes later. XXX year old male cardiac arrest. CPR in progress. It's hard to narrow it down to a specific one, but I assure you it involves family. That said we just wanted to wait and see what happened. Medic here. Responded to a call for a person that fell on the roof of a building. It was raining heavily that night. Details were ambiguous, so we weren't quite sure what we were walking into. Showed up at the same time as fire and PD. So we all went to the roof of this hotel together. Had to be about 60 stories. In the lobby, is this teenager hyperventilating, saying he's dead over and over. Security can't figure out what's going on except that the kid had indicated he had come down the roof himself, and his friend is still up there. We head on up, and ended up having to climb over machinery, and through some narrow catwalks. We reach what I think, were like these massive vents, and there's the kid's friend. His neck was snapped, and he was lying in a pool of blood. We just pronounced him dead right there. Laying next to him was a broken expensive DSLR camera. Turns out this guy and his buddy would sneak into skyscrapers and construction sites. Climb to the highest points with no safety equipment, so they could grab photographs and post it on their blog. I'm sure you've seen those videos slash gifs of young people doing the same thing with gopras and stuff. So these kids snuck past security, climbed over a fence on the roof. Security had to escort us to the roof, because everything was locked by keypad, and climbed this fence thing, to try to stand on the edge to grab pictures. Like I mentioned before, it was raining heavily, and the ground up there was metal and slick. This kid was supposed to graduate high school in a couple months, and now he's dead, because he was striving for internet fame, by doing some dangerous shit. What broke my heart a bit was I was still on scene, when the supervisors called the parents, who didn't even live in this city. As per the friend, they would sneak out, to go pull these stunts. So I can't imagine. Being the mom or dad, and answering that call at 2am, being notified that the child you thought was sleeping down the hall was lying dead in the rain on a hotel roof miles away, and all for what? I used to be an ambulance officer, and on the job it was suicides. 
I had a guy slash his forearms with a knife then realize he didn't want to go through with it. We got halfway to the hospital roughly before he checked out. The most avoidable death I've seen was my grandmother though she went to hospital with a broken wrist. She then developed a staph infection which meant a couple of days stay supposedly. The orderlies then dropped her while moving beds and broke her hip which then lead to her getting pneumonia and her subsequent death. From a healthy 69 year old woman with a broken wrist to dead in a bit over a week. Person in the hospital kept taking their EKG leads off because they didn't like the stickers on their chest. They kept doing this after being warned. Had a heart attack and didn't get found until they couldn't be saved. Keep your damn leads on people. Was an EMT, but this was prior to that, when I was just a volunteer firefighter. Got called to a house fire when a grandmother had woken up her granddaughter and got safely out of the house. Unfortunately she decided to go back into the house and died of smoke inhalation mere feet from the door. Since it was a ways out in the county by the time we got there, the house was fully involved, meaning we couldn't go, in had to fight the fire back, to get through the door. Moral of the story, don't go back into a building in fire, where everyone is out safe, things can be replaced but you can't. I've posted this before, but I once had a patient who had the look of someone with one foot in the grave, who had near complete blockages in all three of the main blood vessels that supply the heart. That's not super unusual, and with open heart surgery she probably had an excellent chance of a good outcome. What was different about this case, was she had apparently she'd had the same thing happen, to slightly less degrees, not once, not twice, but three times over the previous six months, and had refused surgery each time in favor of a Mediterranean diet. She decompensated very quickly, was emergently sedated and intubated, and flown out to the big city hospital for the surgery she should have received 6 months ago. I'm pretty sure she did survive, but did not have a great quality of life. Op I think you would really get a kick out of the Darwin Awards. It's a website that compiles the most stupid deaths each year, and gives the people awards. The only stipulations are they had to have killed themselves unintentionally, not hurt anyone else in the process, and not have had any children prior to their death. That's why it's called the Darwin Awards. Notable entries include a man who strapped a jet engine to the back of his truck, a dude who had a wacky run-in with a wobbly vending machine, and a guy who tried to take a selfie with a bear. DNP, not M's, but elderly slash people with mobility problems not getting rid of the full hazards in their home slash refusing to use their assistive devices. Random throw rugs can be a death sentence for folks who are for risks. A broken hip for a geriatric part is usually a death sentence, they aren't leaving that rehab facility. Also, diabetes in general, so many simple ways to mess it up. Obvious answer would be all of the overdoses, but also many incidents in nursing homes, where a patient will be found dead in the staff state they just saw them 30 minutes ago when that is definitely not the case. The worse is a parent rolling onto their baby while asleep, I haven't had that call yet but other crews did recently, and it is just devastating to all involved. Family, medics, police, fire, everyone. Not M's. But in my lab at school they talked about safety in the lab, and shared how there was this girl who was in a lab with lathes, operated by spinning, and her hair was long, and got caught in the machine, and pulled her to it and she died. Must wear a bun in those labs, not even a ponytail will do you good. Guy stationed on a coast guard ship got hit in the head by a crane, when it fell over. The crane operator didn't put down the outriggers, the big metal feet that stick out to stabilize the crane, and it fell over. Victim was in the wrong place at the wrong time, left behind 4 daughters and a wife. People doing dumb things on the job. Moving an industrial generator? Sure. Stand directly under it, while the loft is lowering it down. Have a truckload of 7500 pound I-beams, that need to be offloaded off a flatbed? Sure thing, do it by yourself with a forklift. Have a wood planer at a furniture factory that gets jammed? Go ahead, stick your arm in there to unjam it. Dude caused massive internal bleeding from using a jackhammer incorrectly. By the time his wife called 911, he was all but dead, and had filled several small trash cans with blood he had vomited. Big guy too. Had to use fireman in the sling, to get him down the stairs. The whole time we were working on him, and getting him down the stairs, 
his wife was nagging him about not hiring someone to break up the pavement, that he was such an idiot for trying to do it himself. She didn't know these were the last words he'd hear from her. Not an M's, but my friend died of AIDS because he got tired of taking his medication. He was born with it and was always a little crazy in an offbeat kind of way. Our friend group never knew he was sick until he got hospitalized. Even then, we didn't know anything but he had pneumonia. When I went to see him his spine was visible and he kept telling us how they'd give him anything for pain whenever he asked, which we all laughed at. He died a month later, laughing till the last day. He expressed regret at having stopped his drugs. His girlfriend, who he'd infected, was devastated as they just had twins. He had watched his mom die from it. Completely avoidable death.